What is up, Bucks fans? We are back at it here on the Pirate Parlay podcast on the Sick Podcast Network. As always, I'm your man, your host, JC Allen. Um, we got a special podcast for you today. We are going to be breaking down what the Bucks could potentially do in this draft uh, with a live seven round mock draft here. Uh, so definitely, if you are watching, uh, drop some comments, drop some likes, drop some hearts. Uh, and we'll get to your comments, questions. But we have a very special guest in here. It's going to be Trevor Sikama. You guys know him, especially if you're Bucks fans. We'll get in all to his on all of his titles and his appearances after the break here in a minute. But we got a loaded show for you. We're ready to bring it to you. Let's go. Turn up your volume because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Pirate Parlay. Battle intercepted. Picked off in the end zone. Bucks are going to beat the Chiefs. We're the champions of the world. The sickest Tampa Bay Buccaneers podcast. It's going to be sick. What is up, guys? We are back. Let's waste no time. Let's bring the man himself in. Trevor Sikama. You guys know him as a former Peter reporter, part of that alumni. You guys know him now as the lead NFL draft analyst for Pro Football Focus, co-host of the NFL Stock Exchange over there. Uh, doing great things. And, man, has he been all over the place. You've seen him on NFL Network. You've seen him on the Rich Eisen Show, Dan Patrick Show, everywhere that wants to talk about draft. they got one man in mind, and that's Trevor Sikama because he is the best. So, Trevor, how the heck are you? Busy man, I know that. I mean, every time I look on my um, on my Twitter feed, it's uh, Trevor joins us to break something down. How you doing? I'm doing fantastic, man. It's so good to be back with you. Um, I was on a show earlier this morning, you know, flex. Um, and they were like, they were like, Oh, what is this? Like one, what do you do? Like, you know, three appearances a a day. And I'm like, at least like at a minimum at this time of year. But, you know, I joke around and I say like, I watch all these prospects and everything so that I get to go on shows. Like this is the fun part for me, watching the guys having the takes. Now we get to talk about them. So like anytime, whether it's Dan Patrick show, whether it's your show, whether whatever it is, I always love coming on, talk a little football, especially when it's Bucks football, man. So I'm excited about the show. Right, I feel you, man. I love writing. Don't get me don't get me wrong, but I love talking more. <laughs> My fans know that. My viewers know that. I am a rambling man. That song was wrote for me, but. Um, I'm so excited. This is like one of my favorite times of the year um, doing these, you know, mock free agencies and mock drafts. And I've been into this since 2005, just doing it on my own. There used to be a site. I'm not sure if you're familiar football's future. Did you ever hear about that site? No football's future. There's a dude. There's been, there've been a lot over the years, but yeah. let's hear. Okay. Let me hear about it. So that's so where you started. Yeah. So football's future. That's where I really started to get into it. And every year they do a football future mock draft and every team had their own boards and we'd all get together and you'd have like a GM an AGM, a capologist, a, you know, running back guy. And you'd focus on whatever your position was. And we'd all get together in one big mock draft. That's and we'd, sick. And then it would turn into a mock off season where there was contract projections and stuff. So I've been into this for so long and I am uh, super excited to be able to dive in with, with you into this um, upcoming Bucks draft. We're going to do a live seven round mock, um, which is going to be a lot of fun because mm-hmm. you are one of the people that put it together. So um, it's, uh, it's I know this has always been, you know, a, a dream of yours and you're, you're doing it, man. And I, I'm so excited. Um, for everything that's come your way. But before we get into it, I do want to shout out Trishan Werfs. Just had his baby, Julius. Uh, congratulations to him and Meredith. I know I was talking to him in the locker room. He was like, I really want to name Julius, but Meredith's not kind of having it. And then lo and behold, his name is Julius. So congratulations out to Trishan Werfs. I know he's not watching this, but it's it's set He might be. You don't he know might, that. He yeah. might be. I mean, he did shoot me a message back a little while ago. So, you know, a small flex. Um <laughs> you flex i gotta flex too but uh anyways um the, some bucks news today we'll get into that now um randy gregory former pass rusher from broncos cowboys re- most recently san francisco signed with the buccaneers today leaving their room with gregory diaby jts anthony nelson marquise watts jose ramirez uh the big question i know some fans are asking is oh does this preclude them from taking a guy in the draft especially in the first round my opinions no. What are your thoughts? Yeah, no. I mean, there's there's no 
there's no one year contract player that would stop you from taking basically anybody in the first round. Right. I think that a move like this is simply an extension of free agency where you're just trying to supplement your needs. So it's not so desperate when you get into draft time and um, you don't want to pigeonhole yourself. Right. If a guy falls to you in the first round, second round, third round, like whatever it is, you want to have the roster flexibility to be able to jump on that. So Jason light, I mean, that's been, his bread and butter. He's a great GM because of those things. And uh, he's done a great job with the roster. And look, Gregory wasn't good last year, but I mean, he came into league a really talented player. I thought he played pretty well when he was with the Broncos, albeit not very much, but right. um, at least he was still effective when he was out there. So there have been flashes over the last couple of years. And yeah, just because this guy was a high profile draft draft guy when he was coming out of the league. I mean, that's not necessarily the viewpoint of him now. This is more of what you said, like, okay, it's Yaya Diaby, it's JTS, you know, you're, you're, it's Logan Hall. Like you're looking for just bodies at this point, but that does not take away from you drafting an edge one type of a player. If you think that they're available in the first round. Right. And I look at that and I go to the other pickups that Jason made too, right? He's, uh, he's obviously super busy signing his own guys, uh, doing a phenomenal job, top three GM in the league. I don't care what people say. Um, but then he goes out and he makes these depth signings and these guys who can push for spots, right? With the uh, Tavier Thomas to push Christian Izzian in the nickel, with the Bryce Hall to push Zion McCollum at the corner spot, with the Ben Bredesen to push Robert Hainsey at center, for Sue Opita to, to potentially compete for that guard spot. Neither of those, any of those guys are all on one year deals preclude them from looking at any of those positions, whether that be interior offensive line, guard, center in the first round, cornerback in the first round, um, and, and, and even a move they haven't made yet, um, wide receiver. I still think that is a very logical spot for them to look to in the first round. So when you look at what Jason's done is he's essentially when built this roster up with needs but no pressing needs. And that's what Jason does best on, with, with when he builds teams, especially heading into the draft. Yeah. Look, and, and that's, that's what the off season is always supposed to be is setting yourself up. Cause look, you know, everybody likes to talk about free agency. Obviously it's fun. I enjoy the frenzy like anybody else. And <laughs> there are times when we get some big switches around the league, but at the end of the day, like, most of the time, not always, but most of the time, guys are available for a reason. Either the contract's bad, either they're on the wrong side of 30, either they're past their prime, like some, something. Like good teams, generally, don't let good players just hit the market or become available. So free agency, when you, when you take it with that mindset, you basically have to approach it as, okay, we're not completely going to retool the roster. We probably aren't. The better way to do it is, again, to get these, you know, tier two, tier three types of players with, okay, if we need a rotational guy, we've already got one. Okay. Well, if we need somebody to step up, if a guy is injured, okay, well, we're not so desperate if that is to happen. It, it, it's all about free agency to me is really about the depth of the roster. And if you get a really good rotational player out of it, great, but it just feels as though hoping that you're going to get these major difference makers in free agency is, is it's, it's really tough to do. It just does not happen nearly as much as I think fans believe that it was going to. So for Tampa, their, their off season strategy was always, Hey, bring back our good players. Cause a lot of them were available and um, shoot. I mean, as we saw with the Houston Texans today, like trading for Stefan Diggs, this was obviously a team that was very interested in Mike Evans, right? Evans getting to go place close to home. Um, I think that he, you know, could have gone and, and, you know, played out the final years of his career playing for CJ Stroud in the state where he was born that he puts on for that he loves to represent like and he played college ball so I think that that was a very real threat so Jason bringing back Evans and 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 Baker and and, and Levante and all those guys that I think meant a lot um that was going to be the big priority so uh, again the this move and the others that you mentioned there they're just depth moves to help you free up uh the first and second and third round of the draft Right. And when you go back to the combine, that's exactly what a guy like Jason Light said. You know, what he learned about this team compared to what he learned about the 2022 team was depth and the amount of depth that they had on that on that roster and getting back to a place where you feel comfortable. And you look at the spots where he's he's put those guys is spots where he, they've needed the depth. Cornerback has been a Achilles heel for this team over the last three years with Carlton Davis and Jamel Dean. And they had to bring in Richard Sherman for Christ's sakes, you know, yeah. a couple of years ago. It's just, it hasn't been a steady position for them. Offensive line. They had to do some reshuffling. You look at two years ago with Luke Gedeke, just not getting it 
Now they've got to try out Nick Lavrette there, who is good, but by no means great. Now he's with the Patriots. But even last year, you know, you start off with Matt Filer, and now here you are there and Stinney finishing the season. Um, now you've got some guys who've got some starting experience who you can trust to maybe go in there, compete for the job if they don't win. You've got good, solid depth. So before we hop into this mock, I want to get um, a, a couple profiles from you on guys because who knows who's going to be there, and I don't want to talk about guys who aren't at that pick. So who are so, like? Look, give me like four guys who really jump out to you that you're eyeing for the Bucks at 26. Okay, so yeah, it's a good question. Um, I think the edge rushers certainly – you highlighted that position, even with the Randy Gregory signing, we, we mentioned, I, I don't think that that moves him off of edge rusher. So I don't think that Dallas Turner is going to make it. Uh, I think that he just, he had too good of a combine performance. His athletic potential is too high. I don't think that he's going to make it. I also don't think Jared verse is going to make it. I think that verse is a tough player to put in mock drafts just because there's a lot of teams in this league that just need offensive firepower. So we, we often lean like, okay, wide receiver, offensive tackle. And, I do some mock drafts where like I've had some scenarios where I'll go through it. Every pick before number 26 where the bucks pick makes sense. Right. And yet Jared verse is still there at 26. I just can't see a world where he makes it Latu, maybe and Latu's edge one for me. And so it's right. kind of crazy that he, to me has the highest potential of any of those big three edge rushers to make it. But I wonder if just the lower athletic profile uh, obviously the neck injury, but he's been healthy for two years. So I'm really not worried about the neck injury. I'm really not, but I just right. wonder, okay, it, maybe that is a reason why he could be available at 26. So I think you're taking a look at all three of those edge rushers. If any of them make it there. Um, you know, I also really think that certainly you mentioned corner corner has been a tough spot for this team and picking at 26 is going to be tough because I've got to imagine Queen on Mitchell from Toledo Terry on Arnold from Alabama, who I think just, I mean, would be CB one on this team um, basically right. right away. I think the same thing with Cooper DeGene. I, I don't really know what his stock is right now. Cause I like him a lot. Like I have him as a borderline top 10 player in this class, but it doesn't seem like the rest of the, you know, insider mock draft people believe are saying the same right. thing. So I wonder if the league's just not as high on him. So maybe Cooper DeGene makes it there. You know, maybe somebody like, Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama as well. So, you know, if if Bowles wants to start playing a lot more man coverage, if he feels like that's where you're comfortable, you could go with a guy like Kool-Aid McKinstry. So I feel like all of those corners, I don't know if Nate Wiggins is really going to be on their board. I don't know if he tackles well enough for what right. Bowles. He's got the speed, but. Uh, right. So that kind of, I'm, I'm a little not bit physical. Hesitant. He's like another Zion, pretty much. He's not physical in the run game. And they He's like not, Zion, right? I mean, you trade Carlton because right. you weren't happy with him, and obviously you're happy enough with Zion. So maybe it, maybe they are interested in Wiggins more than I think um, that they would be. But I think at any of those corners, I think, will be very high on their board, um, any of the edge rushers. And then, to me, the guy that I'd love to see in Tampa is Graham Barton, the offensive tackle from Duke. And, and, and he played tackle at Duke, but he's probably going to be an interior guy. He could play center for you. He could play left guard. He could play right guard. I think he's a plug and play guy for this um, Tampa offensive line as it's currently constructed at one of those guard spots. So um, to me, he'd be a perfect fit for him. Again, I, I don't know if he makes it to 26. That's why it's tough. There's a, there's a handful of players that I, I think would be great on this roster, but do they make it there is the question. But those are the guys that I think about as options for Tampa. Well, we'll find out who's going to make it there for us here shortly. I'm with you on all those guys. Um, I throw a couple wide receivers in there. I think Brian Thomas Jr. I think is a guy who certainly would be on the Bucks radar if he fell there. Um, it's just that athletic profile, you know, on the outside with Goblin back in the slot. Dude, I was watching. So the talk of Twitter today for a little bit was how Jaden Daniels plays outside of structure and like how he passes when he's on scramble plays because there was a port report that said, oh, one NFL executive loves how Jaden Daniels plays when he's like on the run, like throws on the run. And, and a lot of people correctly pointed out like, okay, he actually doesn't do that a lot. Like just because right. he is a fast quarterback, he's actually not like this scrambling out of the pocket type of quarterback. And it's kind of like, are you watching the same thing? So he, Jaden only has 16 passing attempts when scrambling this year on 425 dropbacks. So it's like nothing. So right. I went back and I watched all 16 of his attempts. And there's a reason why I'm bringing that up because one of the attempts was 
he found Brian Thomas late when he was, it was a scramble rollout to the sideline. And it was actually one of his best scramble throws. This is just a beautiful over the top, straight in the bucket to Brian Thomas. And he's got about, when he catches the football, I think he's got about 45, 40 yards still to get into the end zone. And he turns on the Jets you know, so on. damn fast. And you go, there's the 4-4 four, four, or 4-3-3 four, three, three speed, All maybe. Right. And, and that was, I, I remember watching that this afternoon. And I was just like, holy cow. I mean, it's just a different type of speed with the player who's that big. Yeah, he's uh, he's he's definitely. And uh, A.D. Mitchell's another guy. And, uh, uh, there's some guys. We'll see. We'll see. Um, let's bring up the draft board here. Um, I've got it ready to go. Um, we'll do oh, look at that beautiful. Rounds. Look at that beautiful mock draft simulator. It's it's so nice. We'll do seven rounds. We'll, we'll go not fast because it tends to go too fast. You know, one thing I will say, sometimes I have trouble pausing this thing. If I want to make a trade, it, it drives me insane. Oh yeah. So if, yeah, if you, if you want to like kind of play the, the trade game, you got to slow it down a little bit. That's got a pro to. move. That's a pro tip there. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to go with you here. Public versus PFF board. Kind of give me the setup that you think would be yeah. best. You should you should take it all the way to the public board because public's probably like not the right word. We should be using consensus or gotcha. we should actually be using the word predictive. That's what we should be using because okay. the the public board again, like public doesn't exactly explain what's going on here. It's basically like I okay, thought it just like smells like me who use it and <laughs> like refresh no, yeah, every no, no, time no. so and I get like Jaden right. Daniels. <laughs> what it what it is is we compile a handful of mock drafts from around the industry from people that we think have pretty high accuracy scores that are very plugged in. And right. we make a, a, a predictive consensus out of um, a lot of those boards that I think give us a clear picture of what we think is going to happen in the draft because the PFF board, and I'm, I'm glad I get to explain this to PFF board. Those are my rankings. Those are like PFF's rankings. So don't use them. <laughs> they, no, 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 no. I, I think that uh, they just like they're linked to the big board page. So right. like I do the rankings more for how I see these players, less of like where I exactly see them going. Like I have Cooper DeGene like nine overall for me. Right. I don't think Cooper's getting picked in the top 12. So no. it, that's why at this time, at this time of year, uh, everybody out there who's using the, the mock draft simulator you should be using the public big board and I'll see what we can do about changing the, the wording on that. Cause I would love for it to say predictive. Cause I think that makes a lot more sense. Perfect. Um, and then care for positional value. What are we doing here? Um, I, I guess I wouldn't mess with that too much because I think the predictive board handles a lot of that stuff. Um, and especially, especially since the team needs are already pretty set after free agency. Okay. Leaving it where it is, I think will allow the simulator to go as intended. Perfect. That's great news for me because I'm always like, hmm, do I mess with this? Do I do that? No, All I right. think the only thing that you – we test a lot of this stuff. And at this point of the year, if you're just tr trying to do mock drafts to see what you, like who you think will be available for the Bucks at 26, if you leave everything as is and you just make the board completely the public board, I think that will give the most realistic scenario for you. Perfect. All right. So we want to make any trades before we trading Kyle Trask, <laughs> Joe trying to trade Um, no, we can never do that. Gator, great Kyle Trask. Um, right. no, I, I don't think know. I, I don't, I, I think, I think we could start it. Yeah. 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 That was more than just Caleb Williams off the board. Malik neighbors. Malik! Wow. All right. I'll see how this goes. This is a lot faster than what you usually do. I'll slow it down a little bit. All right. Okay. So let's see. Did Barton get picked? Yeah, where are we at? Oh, he did get picked. God, Graham man. Barton, 21. Jared Verse, 19. Mm -hmm. Lot 17. 17? I think in this Come game, on, Trent Balky. What are you doing to me? <laughs> Trent Balky. So I think Cooper DeJean went 12. Jaden Daniels went. I almost hate doing this like this. this Shoot, is, you, I mean, no, this, is, this, this is this is this is definitely a more random one for sure. This is when I usually like restart it. Like Jake Daniels gets out of the top four. I'm like, yeah, you can no. restart it. That's fine with me. All right, all right let's re, let's restart this one real quick. Because I think that this showcases again. Like, there's there's a good um, 
there's a good amount of randomness that can that can come with the mock draft simulator which yeah obviously you want to do it for accuracy but at the same time um you want to be able to switch things up the nfl draft is extremely unpredictable right so we always want to put it in our system where things can go kind of crazy and and if they right. do this is this is what happens if your team's on the board and it gets a little it gets a little crazy a little wonky right 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 okay Ooh, now we're kind of more in the realm of yeah so this is i mean this is definitely possible okay now, I want to keep an eye on it because if we get into the 20 and some of these guys are still here, I think I'm going to pause it right around 20 and we'll kind of reassess and reevaluate. Okay, versus off. Oh, Barton went to the bang. Oh, a lot too went right after him. All right, press the pause button twice. <laughs> <laughs> One, two. Okay, all right. So this is what we're doing right here. Um, I don't, I don't, Jason just doesn't like to trade his draft pick, so I don't know if he'd trade up. All right. I, I figured this much too. So let's go top 10. We've got Williams, Daniels, McCarthy over May, which at this point could seem really realistic. Yeah. I don't think May gets out of the top four, top five at the very least, but him going mm -hmm. to the Giants at six makes a ton of sense. You slow down through the board. You're looking. I think a lot of these guys make sense to come off the board prior to Verse, you know, <laughs> Balky took lot to last one. God, he again, an edge rusher. He takes Verse this time. Um, Barton's gone. Uh, Cooper Jean goes. And then Chop Robinson, who's super interesting. Let's talk Ooh. about Chop Robinson real quick for a second. Because sure. the testing screams like draft and develop, and this guy could be good. Doesn't seem like a guy who's going to be day number one type of prospect for you to come in like the rest of these guys. But. You know, when you look at what he did at the combine, when you look at the four pillars of pass rush, mm -hmm. you can see the development and, and it all being there eventually. What's your take on Chop? Is he a first round talent for you? Is he? I know um, you've got him. I think in the second with a second round grade, if I'm not mistaken. But do you think yeah. he's a guy taking in the first round? Yeah, I actually have him. I actually have him with a. Um, I think it's a late second, early third round grade for him. I think he's like 49th or something like that on my board. Um, I'm just really hesitant, man. Like I, I get the athleticism and I, like, if somebody said to me like, yeah, I, we just got to draft athletes. It's like, okay. It, I mean, if that's your strategy, I don't really have a good counter for you because he's insanely athletic. Right. So if that's what you want out of an edge rusher, I can't really disagree with you too much. The issues with him is I think that his stride length is very short. So even though he explodes off the snap, I think he's he's not exactly getting up into space into the backfield. It still takes him a handful of steps to be able to get even and around the corner, even with right. his crazy athleticism. I also think that he does not have good length, so he's not going to win with length at the NFL level, uh, which stunts the pass rush potential that he has in terms of the pass rush moves that he's going to be able to utilize. I don't think he is built for run defense. I feel like he's kind of just a pass rush specialist, and he doesn't have production. Like over the last right. two years, like he, he he graded really well for us. He had high passage win percentage stuff, but he, for whatever reason, whether it's the short strides or the short arms or a combination of the two, he's just not able to get into the backfield quick enough to actually be able to finish plays. And look, I, I work for Pro Football Focus. I understand that sacks are not everything. We have we have more like advanced data points to be able to supplement those things, but. Right now, I kind of just see Chop Robinson as a pass rush specialist. And and a lot of people are like mocking him in the top 20 because he's that kind of an athlete. People talk about him like Micah Parsons. He's not to me. He, he's not the same player. Uh, I think people are getting way too caught up in the fact that they're both coming from Penn State. Um, they're both guys that were insane off the edge and getting into the uh, getting into the into the backfield. But I just didn't think that he was able to finish as well enough as his athletic ability should have enabled him to at the college level. And it only gets more difficult in the NFL. So I know people talk about Chop as a first round option for Tampa. He's not my favorite. He he, he really isn't. I'm not on that board. I I just don't. I, I'm not. I'm not there. So all right, let's go through some of the available options. We do have a plethora of people who want to trade up, so we can take a look at that too. Um, uh, moving back a few spots, 28, 29, 32, 34. So we can potentially move back. I mean, really, anywhere in the second round. If who's, we want. who's 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 on the board right now? Let me see. So let's look who's on the board too. Yeah. So okay. we have um, Newton, which is extremely. <laughs> the, 
That's that's uh it would, be, that's, would be an embarrassment of riches on the interior, but God, right. it'd be fun. Uh, Kool Aid, so Kool Aid's there. JPJ's yep. there. Um, Peyton Wilson, wow. Brian Thomas Jr.'s there. Um, Zach Fraser, Lad McConkey. And we're kind of getting into you know second round grades. So yeah, you know I wouldn't be opposed to moving back. I know Bucks consensus would say, and and we got it in the chat already. JPJ is on the board for me, Trey, and 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 uh, Trevor. Um, and let me just kind of throw this at you. Uh huh. Donovan Smith, Ali Marpet, Alex Kappa, Luke Gedeke, Cody Moak, Robert Hainsey for love him or hate him. These are all guys Jason has found in the second and third round. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you've got a guy like Tristan Wirfs, who's an all pro at left tackle. Um, but do we not trust Jason to find an offensive lineman in the second or third round that could come in and start? No. And, or and should we be leaning Barton or JPJ if they're there? Yeah, look, and, and there, the thing is that there's good interior offensive linemen in this class. So, so good, all the way down round three. Right, and I think that you could get a starter on the interior. So... I've I've seen JPJ and like look I, you can you could pencil in Jackson Power Johnson as uh, one of the starters for this Easy. team, but I feel like McKinstry is probably the pick. You know what I would actually do is I'd probably move back two spots of Buffalo because you've got both wide receivers on the board. You figure Arizona did Arizona pick one at four? Did they pick Malik at four? I mean, even if they did pick Malik at four, there's a chance that they could double dip if they wanted to. Or sorry, they, yeah, they picked Marvin Harrison Jr. at uh, at that spot. So, I mean, I don't think you get much, right? I think, I think you've just bridged that gap between the your your fourth round and your and your. I mean, I, I I don't know. I don't know if you'll be able to get forty four. Wow. Okay, so they'll they'll do it for forty four. We're one forty four. Yeah, one forty. Yeah. So that's their fifth round pick. So a fifth round pick to move. Yeah. Okay. Move up spots. Okay. I think I mean, Jason would be happy with that. You know, you, I mean, would you, they would they do it for 133? I mean, they do it for both of them, it's saying. No, but we won't do that. That's too unrealistic. Yeah, that's unrealistic. I think 144 makes sense. You're moving down two spots, and again right, for fine. Jason, it's about bridging that gap from the fourth round at 125. So you're not waiting all the way to 220 to pick again. Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I'm fine. I'm good with this. I, I I'd, I'd move back with both wide receivers on the board. I would. All right. Let's see. They're gonna accept it, and let's resume the draft and see what happens here. You know, Buffalo's going wide receiver. Yeah. It's on Newton, and here that's, we are. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. Broncos want to trade from seventy six. They can kick rocks. We'll see you later. Yep. <laughs> no way to trade into seventy six. And then I think we're looking at really Kool Aid. I think is a strong consideration. JPJ, and then Ad Mitchell. Um, the thing that leads me more towards Kool-Aid, and I actually just did a draft profile with him with John Vogel. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. Mm -hmm. He's part of this sick podcast network. Um, uh, you know, he's kind of got Kool-Aid, and, and I kind of agree with him too. He's more of a number two than a true number one. Um but I would draft I would draft Kool-Aid here. Cornerback's a premium position. Yeah. He, uh, and the Bucks just had him in today for a, th a 430 visit too. So you know they're interested at least. Yeah. I so. would I would I would take Kool-Aid. Um I would go for the corner and then I'd play interior offensive line with, you know, wherever they got to pick. Wow, Lions did go Eddie Mitchell. Look at that. Oh, if right Carolina right. didn't draft a wide receiver. Their fans would just absolutely <laughs> riot. <laughs> I'm happy with that cuz Troy Oh, and they drafted a the linebacker. Oh man. This is literally nightmare fuel for the Panthers. Oh, jeez. Patriots come away with us with Jaden Daniels and Troy Franklin. I'll be a very happy person. I really like Braden Fisk if he falls to the Bucks second round okay. pick. Yeah, no, so do I. I mean, he's uh, well, you know, for Tampa, it's it's sort of complicated because that's a luxury pick. It's it's a luxury pick for them, right? 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 Um, so, all right. Let's just go back through Greg Straw, Jordan Morgan. Just kind of looking at every what everybody else did, so we can kind of get a grasp of what they might do next. Um, I like Xavier Leggett, man. I just don't like him that high. Yeah, you too. I mean, he's going in the I, second round, I think. Adisa, wow. yeah, I think so too. I just, what are your thoughts on Isaac? 
because I kind of like him. I certainly I like, like him it. more than Braswell. Um, he's off the board, I but solid. I think he's solid. I think he's really solid. That's the best way that I could describe him. And people were like, "Oh, okay, well, that's not very good." Sure, it is. And like the day two, like like it's just kind of like how it goes. All right. Um, All right. All right, so available players for us. We've got Javon Bullard, Ricky Parasol, Brook, Ohoro Horo. That's Close. really tempting right there. Keon? Really tempting. Do you like Keon? I'm not a huge fan of him, but the Bucks brought him in for a 30 visit, so I know they're at least interested. I know they need someone on the outside. I think getting him at 57 would be um, a good value yeah. for him. Um. But then I'd also like Marshawn Neeland, although I don't like his arms. Okay, so they don't pay uh, me until 89. Right. So I would uh, Christian I'd rather Haynes I'd rather there. take I'd rather take Christian Haynes here. The offensive guard from UConn. You passed him. Yeah. Let me just let's do some. I, I would I, I would rather take Christian Haynes here because I think that he is a plug and play type of a, a guard for you. Um, I think he play right away and I like the idea of maybe hitting wide receiver with uh, 89 or 92. Let's just see for S and giggles. Who's left for edge. Cause I've got a guy in the later rounds available in my mind at edge. If they okay. can't get one early. Okay. I do not like Braylon Trice. I'm not a big Austin Booker fan either. Can you talk me into Austin Booker? Cause I don't, I don't see it. Not really. Okay. Not good. really. I, I want to make sure I wasn't by myself. So we'll take I think, I think Booker's, Haynes here. Booker's, Booker's like a fringe third round, fourth round grade to me. So we did have one trade, but it was all the way to 74. I wasn't willing to do that. I think the Bucks just addressed two two important positions. First of all, they've got a starter at guard. Uh, you can roll with Hainsey. You've got Br Brittis in there if you need somebody. Um, and I think uh, with cornerback, you know, you never know with – with Jamel Dean, you really need to protect against that position. Uh, cornerback, it's the lifeblood. Oh, yeah. um, and a guy who's who's very physical in the run game, too, in Kool-Aid, I think, would be a really sound fit. Uh, he's not out of place in zone, but he's not great in zone. Oh, Malachi Corley, two picks. Mm. To Houston, uh, richer get richer. Um, but I think... Um, you know, I, I think it'd be a good addition and, and good fail safe if you know Zion doesn't work out. Um, okay, so let's see. Just when Edgen Cooper, I do like Cooper. Malachi Corley going there, two spots before kind of hurts. Three spots before. Let's look at the board, Trev. Uh, we got mm -hmm. Jamari Thrash, uh, Benson. They want to go running back. I think he's probably he's not my number one running back. Um, See, we could have maybe got Mason McCormick. I love Mason McCormick. I'm a huge Mason McCormick stand, man. He plays nasty, Look, dirty. He does. And he's honestly like he is a he's a Jason Light type. Like Oh yeah, they went to he, North Dakota State last year with Cody. <laughs> no, and I mean, yeah, he I mean he is a he is a Jason Light type. So like he's gonna be on their radar for the third round. No question about it. Yeah. All right. I mean This is where I get like. This is where I get hung up here in the third round, man. If I take so I'll, a guard I'll, I'll earlier, you. if you what? If I take a guard in the second round or in the first round, I always come back here with, like, you know, it's like Cedric Van Pran is there, Mason McCormick is there, Dominic Puny's there, and I would feel comfortable with any of those guys. Over, not over, but. Instead of a Christian Haynes or a Grant, Grant Barton, um, if you go, if you don't go one, yeah. two in the third, yeah, I can see, what, I can see what you're saying there. So they've got they're they're, they're picking in three picks again. So we okay. will be this will basically be like a one, two for them. I'll tell you what I would actually do here. Um, I'd take Renardo Green here, the Florida State corner. I'd pick double I'd pick both of corner? those dudes, huh? Double up on corner. I would double up on corner for how the board fell because now I have two 
locked down man coverage type of corners. And like, if you ever want to go to man coverage, these are two really good young man coverage corners. If Dean doesn't give you that consistency this year, you can move on from him. If Zion doesn't give you that consistency, you can move forward and green and McKinstry can still be your one, two, like, and, and it's, and it's fine. It's completely fine. Okay. So I would, I would, I would double up on corner here, especially because they have pick 92 as well. So See just what we got for trade potential to 97.99. So we can move back eight spots, but we'll go with we'll go with Renardo Green here. We're gonna give me a little bit while we're waiting for the next pick and two picks. What what um what's uh, some of the Renardo Green strength and weaknesses? I mean, he's he's a, he's a beast in man coverage, man. I mean, like they put him in the, those press man situations, and he has so much confidence. Now he's not nearly as confident when he's playing in off coverage, and so that's something that you'd absolutely have to work on. But you love those types of fearless defensive backs that'll get up in the face, get on the get along on the line of scrimmage. I think the feet move well. I think the hand placement timing is really good for him. He'll attack the ball when it's in the air. Um, this is somebody who I think could be like a late second, early third round type of a corner. So to get him at eighty nine to me. I really do like him a lot. Perfect. And that gives the Bucks depth at one of the positions they've had the biggest run of injuries over the last three years um, mm-hmm. as well. It's just been injury after injury at that spot. You need good corners, um, man. All righty. We're at pick 92. We pick again next at 125. The trade offer is all the way at 156. We're not going to take that. So, yeah. um, again, we've got Trey Benson on the board, um, Brennan Rice on the board. If they want to look at wide receiver, let's just go by position by position. Go wide receiver. Uh, Yeah, let's see what we got. Slim picking. Oh, like Malik Washington's here. Is it a little early for him, though? I do like I mean, yeah, it is, but I don't don't know if you're going to get him at 125. Right. Well, let's. So the edge rusher I was thinking about, I don't know if we'll get him there either. And that is Muhammad Kamara. So right fringe there. I do like Muhammad Kamara, but I think this is too early. I mean, we could risk it, roll the dice, because I do think they come away in this draft with an edge. He's he's such a heavy effort player, man. It's so it's so fun to watch him play. He's just. He's got super short arms. Like his, um, let me look it up really quick. Uh, when I look it up, I can just pop it up on here. Oh, does it have the? Does it have his measurables up there? I think it does. I think last time I checked it did. I know they're in the draft guide. So he has. He is third percentile height, 11th percentile weight, 10th percentile arm length. He's just small. Like, he's just got small arms. It reminds me a bit of Shaq Barrett. A little bit. I do think that that I do think that this defense will love, like, who he is as a football player. So if this is your guy, I would say let's draft him at 92 because I don't think – I don't know if we'll get him at one. I don't necessarily I know made if he's the first, my guy. I made, the, just I made the first three picks, so you 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 could take he, your guy here at ninety two. He's just one of my backup, one of my backup guys. You know, um, Javon Solomon intrigues me. Xavier Thomas intrigues me as well. I mean, I'm here. I'm just doing this with you to kind of get as. I mean, I've been doing my film, and I'll dive more into like Buck centric prospects here. Um, mm-hmm. But I mean, I, you're you're my you're my captain on this magic carpet ride, man. You're, you're the other one that has got the big board done and the deep dive on all these prospects. And obviously it works immensely with you being a Tampa fan because you know what this team needs. You know how this team's run. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I'd be down. I, is, I would be down for an edge rusher. Just, so what do you think edge. about? What do you think about Xavier Thomas and Solomon? Um, they're they're higher on the board for me. I, I Xavier Thomas, um, I think is a better football player to me. Like no question about it. I just you know he's the number three overall recruit in the twenty eighteen class, and here we are, it's twenty twenty four, and he's still not in the NFL. So it's like 
well, right. what happened here? You know, so I, I think he, he had an unfortunate foot injury in 2022, but like, I know it's just kind of been, it feels like it's been an up and down journey for him at Clemson. Um, if the character stuff checks out, like if the off the field stuff che- checks out, um, I, I would, I would not hesitate to draft him at 92. Oh, here's a guy. Um, and, uh, <laughs> I love that. You know what I noticed? I messaged you too. If you guys are looking at like the free agent thing, it Uh shows like it has a breakdown. It's got the full breakdown and then it's just got like a a list by list and it's like thick. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. With thick is spelled with two C's. Like I've never noticed that, but it's hilarious. Um, Yeah. That was, uh, I I like Solomon. So so Solomon played as an off ball linebacker for three or four years while he was at Troy. And then they moved him to edge last year. And he was an all American. Like he had, like you say, 17 sacks. I mean, he was all American. His passer grades. Fantastic. His passer's win rate was fantastic. He's got super long arms despite being a little bit shorter. So like I, if, if you wanted to pick Solomon, he makes sense as well as like a stand up um, outside linebacker type. You wouldn't want him being, the like heavy handed five tech you'd, you'd want him as more of the stand up guy. So if you think you can, right. if you can manufacture enough um, snaps for him in that regard, I, I would take him as well. I would take both Solomon and Xavier Thomas, as you can see from my big board, I would take both of them over, over Mo Kamara. So it's like, it's one of these things where it just gets so tough at this spot because like it doesn't, it's almost like, it fits lesser needs right here, right? Like you need a running back too. Trey Benson would be a hell of a number running back too. You need, yeah. you know, you you could use um, you could use safety help because you really only have, you know, uh, Whitehead and then you got Kayvon Merriweather. You know, there's a couple yeah. of good safeties. I think um, the like um, Taylor Demerson as well, the safety from right. Texas Tech. He's very smart, right? So like. It's like, okay, so there's secondary positions here that are available that we could use, but we haven't addressed some of our big positions that we need. We haven't addressed edge. We haven't addressed a number four wide receiver. We haven't addressed, you know, some of these other spots. So that's where I think when whenever I do my mocks, and I don't know about you guys, but whenever I do my mocks, when I get to this place, I'm like, shit, especially if I've already been forced into taking like, you know, um, an interior offensive lineman, because you can see there's plenty of guys who I'm high on that I think that could could be plug and play guys like puny and McCormick. So mm-hmm. um, for me, it's always difficult. I think we go for one of those spots um, that is a need more than um, a value like a Benson would be. Um, I'm between. I'm between one of the edge rushers and the wide receiver. Um, I'd so take Xavier would, Thomas. Xavier Thomas. Let's take Xavier yeah. Thomas. And that's yep. going to make yep. Bucks banter very happy. Who's been going off in the comments? Xavier <laughs> Thomas time. Xavier I, Thomas. I, would, I agree. I think that I think the edge rushers in need. Um, they. I mean, they 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 could absolutely use a player with Thomas's juice. He's he was number three overall recruit in the in the nation in 2018 for a reason. And I still think he's a good football player. So again, like I said, like as long as you think that he fits with your culture. Um, I think there's a lot to like about his athleticism and how he attacks the uh, attacks the quarterback, attacks the back. And I think this locker room is really strong too. I I think they can take on a guy who's got Cole Bishop in the fourth round. That's absolutely crazy. I didn't even see him there, or else I would have snatched him up. Are you not high on Cole Bishop? I like Cole Bishop. I think he's fine. I've been told that he's not getting out of the second round. Wow. That would be now. I know. I, I feel like the league is higher on him than I am. Where did I go? Hold on. I could check. I could check here. What grade did I give him? Um, uh, I gave him a late third, early fourth round grade. Okay. My little scouting synopsis, the spark notes version is Bishop has starting potential as a strong safety and a slot defender, but some of his over-aggressive tendencies and lack of patience in zone will need more discipline at the NFL level for him to become a reliable player. Makes sense. Good tackler. Good slot defender. I just think that uh, gets a little over-aggressive at times. 
This is interesting too, because I've seen Cooper Beeb and numerous of like some of the guys, you know, the national guys. He's going in the second round. They love him, man. I'm just not. I'm just not as high on him. Like you talk, you talk to some people, and there were some people who thought that Cooper Beeb was is like a top twenty player in this class. Like it's an easy eval, and I just, I know he tested well at the combine. I just don't think he's a great athlete, and I don't think he's super imposing with his strength. Like. When he bulldozes people and erases people out of the play, it's often like corners or linebackers. Like I don't see him doing that stuff with defensive tackles. I just I, you look. I, I have I have totally come to peace with the fact that if Cooper BB turns out to be an All Pro guard, it'll be a, it'll be a scouting lesson for me. Of right. I, you just don't I just I just don't really care then like how athletic guys are because he's right. super smart. He's very savvy, understands angles and leverage and hand placement and timing and everything very, very well. High football IQ player. And maybe that's just what matters by far the most. Because if not, I think his footwork is slow. I think off the line of scrimmage, he's kind of slow sometimes. I don't think he's that imposing when it comes to strength. And so it's like, okay, I think he's a third, fourth round kind of a player. But other people say that he's a top 40 guy, no question. So (laughs) I'm just going to disagree with it with people. All right, let's head here. Um, there is a trade offer from Washington to move down a few picks, but I'm not really interested in that because there's yeah, there's I think some we got four players. left. We we got enough on the board. Um, Cooper Beebs, one of them. Malik Washington's still there. Oh, there we go. Um, there we go. That, I think that's likely the pick. Uh, Mo Cam- Mo Kahama, uh, uh Kamaras fell down to there. Ben Sinat's yep. interesting. <sighs> I get it, you know. I can see why. I like. You know, I like Sanat. It's just a. I don't. I don't know. Maybe he. Maybe he. I mean, the tight end room on this team is not very strong at the top. So. And it's young too. Do we really want to bring another young player in there and continue yeah. the? Yeah. You know? I think Rendo is interesting, especially with the new, um. New return rule. rules. So it's, I mean, right. he's interesting, and I think he probably gets drafted before this, uh, be, with his combine and his the kickoff rule. Such a grace, interesting as a linebacker prospect. Um, here's a here's a guy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Here's a guy that I, I'm I'm high on. I really like Christian Boyd. Um, I don't think he's the pick. I think we're gonna go Malik Washington. I'm just using this to talk about players I like. Um, mm-hmm. what are your what are your thoughts on on Christian Boyd? I know, dude, uh, really good this past season. Really high pass rush win percentage from a guy at three technique. I get to see him in person at the Shrine Bowl. He felt unblockable for basically every game of practice that he was out there. So I felt like yeah. he was the biggest combine snub of any player that didn't get invited Jeez. to Indianapolis. So, yeah, I like him a lot. Yeah, I, I really like him. I think the Bucks need some more depth. I know they signed Greg Gaines, but I think they come out of here with that one one at least one defensive tackle, even if it's in the later rounds, if they make a trade. Yeah, I mean, it's not to like about about Malik Washington, really. You know, um, you look at the target share, the snaps, um, the production. You just the only thing is that you wonder how did it take so long? Like, why did it take so long for this guy to really break out like this? Because he was at Northwestern, I believe, um, right. before he was at Virginia, and his. Last year at Virginia, I mean, he was the most productive wide receiver in all of college football, it felt like. so Good production. Uh, and he really gives you a layer of protection if things go wrong with Godwin or you need to replace him next year. Um, mm-hmm. you know, and obviously we know just from watching McVay's offense, they'll use two guys in the slot, not give a care in the world. Um mm-hmm. So he's uh I, I like that selection there as well. Moving into the fifth round, we acquired a fifth round pick 144 overall from the Buffalo Bills, uh, which we gives us one, baby. you know, you know, move down two spots. Still got our guy. Mm-hmm. Um, we're not gonna move back any further. No thank you for that trade. I think Jordan Travis. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um yeah. so I, I mean, kind of Christian Boyd went off the board, unfortunately for me, but I think so I if like, we're looking at, I like a couple of the interior defensive linemen that are left, you know, like, especially with Greg Gaines being more of like the nose tackle backup. I like Makai Wingo here. I like Wingo um, too. 
Yeah, he's he's if you if you make him just a like a pass rush specialist type of three technique, man, I think he can get in the oh, backfield indeed. and pre- be pretty fun for you. So I like him. I like Logan Lee as well. I thought that he had a really nice shrine bowl. Um, I don't know if Mason Smith is going to be here in the fifth round. Probably not because he's just too damn talented. But um, right. I, I I just, I mean, his, his tape's just not great. And if you want to sit here and be like, nah, you got to bet on it and you're going to take him in the fourth round, like maybe even the third round. Whatever, I, it's it's I can't it's it's hard for me to argue with you because he's he's built like an alien, but hey, he just has not shown it yet, man. He just has not shown that football ability. So I know I've already taken two corners, but Kalen King is interesting too to me. I think he's tough for me. I I mean, yeah. elite elite twenty twenty two season, just an absolute shutdown corner, and this year it's not good. This year it was like his his, his talent got zapped from the monsters in Space Jam. Like I don't I don't I cannot explain what happened to him. I really don't know. So I'm interested right here in Bo, um, because I don't expect him to be here. Um, I think mm-hmm. he's a Bucks kind of player that they like. I do like uh Makai Wingo as well. Um and then um I think Cedric Gray is interesting too as well. For this team, I know they met with him at the combine, had a formal interview with him. Yeah, so I think they would like in, him. Of interest, I, I but I think they're also by Wingo, honestly. But because I think they're good with, I think they feel comfortable with KJ Britt. I I know I don't as much yeah, as yeah, but the you speed. need yeah, but you need more linebackers than that. Like I know they have. Um... Savasi 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 Dennis Dennis well. drafted in the fifth round. So essentially you're drafting back to back fifth round linebackers. They've that's got fine. Like linebackers make up the special teams depth of your team. So, right. Well, they've got JJ Russell too, um, who actually was really good in his only start last season, uh, filling in. Right. So, I mean, it depends like you need big bodies to rotate right now. You've got Greg Gaines, but behind him, you've got Mike green, you know, that's your fifth lineman. Yeah, I think I, yeah, win- I, I'd go Wingo here. I'm gonna go Wingo here. Smart. I'm gonna go Wingo here. I'm gonna hope my guy's on the board at 220. I doubt he will be your guy. Um, as a running back position, um, I, I'll, I'll let guy. you see. He's a small school guy, and if you know who my interior lineman crush is, you know I watched plenty of tape on him. That this guy just oh Isaiah yeah. Davis. Oh my God, I love Isaiah Davis's game. I just I, uh, do. for number two for number two back in the league. I love his game, especially yeah, because it's it, it's so much like I love Nehemiah Pritchett too. Um, he's a guy who I was high on a couple of years ago. Then he came back to he's school. Feisty. Uh yeah, he's spicy. He, he he had a great combine. Um, proved he can you know he, he can run with the boys. Um, he's gonna take some work. He's not a day one guy. Dang, yeah, I have uh, Isaiah Davis as RB nine in this draft. Yeah, told you, man. I've I been just, hiring. Well, I just, I just did his one. full draft guide profile um, earlier this it's week. So fun to watch. Yeah, he doesn't have the like old, home run the, speed, but no, he doesn't have home run speed. But patience. honestly, like the the area where I actually wish he was better is I wish he was a little bit more violent north to south because like he's right. this big back and. He kind of has this finesse game to him that you go, oh, look at that, like big back, like he's making dudes miss. The footwork is really light. But sometimes I wish he just lower the shoulder and be like, okay, I'm bigger than you also. And it feels like he's right. he's a little too finesse for me. I wish he would be a, a bigger player. But You can get those tough know. yards, though, too. And I think that can – I think God can. skip I just wish I saw it more often because he, he tries to bounce it outside a lot in college, and that works at SDSU. It's not going to work at the NFL level. He's not fast yeah. enough to do it. I think Skip Pete can bring that out of him, though. All right. I think a guy like Skip right. Pete can bring that out of him. Because he did it with Rashad last year. Rashad was running a little timid yeah, last played year. played well, man. Yeah. And he played, you know – I do like Frank Gore Jr., though, too. Um, he's all right for me. I mean, we're looking at number Trying two running MVP. Back, you know, so I say Davis is on the board. He is on the board. You got to adjust your thing. Cause he's, he's low there. I think I might. No, I know. I know. I know. I'm, uh, I haven't, I haven't updated the board yet. I, you could, 
Yeah, I don't think he'll be here. <laughs> oh, oh, is that Davis? I, I don't, I don't think Davis is gonna be here. He's not, but I'm gonna force it anyways. So, Brandon Coleman, talk to me about Brandon Coleman because this, he's a polarizing player. I've got people who think he's a day two guy, and I've got, and I've seen people think that he's potentially, you know, priority free agent. What's going on with Brandon Coleman from TCU? Yeah, I, I've only watched, I only watched a little bit of him. Um, he's he's the guy who. He was, I think, I think he was a zero star recruit. If I remember that correctly, I'm looking it up now. Um, I think this is, yeah, I think this was him because his journey is all over the place. Like he played basketball growing up because he's a former basketball player, played at a Juco, transferred to TCU, had a red shirt year moved into guard. Then they kicked him out to go the other side of the guard, the other side of the line scrimmage of guard. Then they kicked him out to left tackle. So like he's been all over the place. So I feel like he hasn't really gotten the opportunity to really like hone in on one spot yet. But I mean, there's a reason why I think they're moving him everywhere. I think it's because they think they have that flexibility with him. So I, I don't think he's going to be a day two pick, but maybe a priority day three pick, maybe earlier than round six. Uh, we got Bucks made asking your thoughts on Anthony gold. Oh, we have the expert in the business. I th I think he's so, I mean, he's a good football player uh, again, like with the um, new kickoff rules. I wonder if he, if he kind of like gets a boost in his stock report, but um, super fast player. I think the thing with him that I was just disappointed. I didn't see nearly as much yards after the catch stuff from him uh, as I thought it was going to be with a player of his, with his speed. Um, and I just I felt like he was very much a slot only type of player who the speed is going to get him drafted. But uh, I thought I was going to see a little bit more from him on on tape when it came to utilizing that athletic ability, even after the catch. And I just didn't see a lot of it. So um, that kind of like left a lot of a lot to be desired for me with Anthony Gould, who I, I know a lot of people are, are higher than me on. I just didn't uh, see a lot of that stuff in tape. What's your thoughts on uh, Tanner Bordellini? So I didn't like him when I first watched him and then he played really well at the senior bowl and it forced me to kind of go back and watch him. And I actually was decently impressed with him as, as, as a center. Like I think uh, pulling it up now. Yeah. I gave him like a late third round grade. So my, again, my scouting report for him is Bordellini brings an alluring combination of versatility, high football IQ and top tier athleticism. He's got starter qualities, but his lack of length could be a deal breaker for NFL success. So that's why it's like, man, you, you probably love what you see, but he is cow. Where's his, where was his measurables? Uh, Bordellini center prospect eighth percentile arm length. And like that absolutely shows up in his tape. So I think some teams are going to have him as like a mid round pick. Other teams might have him as like a sixth, seventh round pick. So, right. I like his flexibility. I think he's a guy that you probably look for like, you know, late fifth, early sixth, and you kind of develop him behind the scenes type guy. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, he's got the smarts. And if you can play with good leverage and understand your opponent, I, I yep. think that can kind of negate sometimes arm length. Obviously, we saw it with with Luke Gedicke this year, you know, playing right tackle with his tiny arms, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, what um, was what was Gedicke's arms? I think thirty one and a three quarters, thirty two. So for oh, this offensive lineman in general. So him matched up against thirty two and a fourth. He has third percentile arm length for offensive tackles. <laughs> yeah, a tiny, but he tiny. gets it done. He's mean. He's gonna be on the cruise tomorrow. I'll see him. Oh, I didn't. I'm going on the Bucks cruise tomorrow, so that should be fun. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm super That's excited, awesome. man. Hell My first yeah. cruise too. Really? Uh, where you, where where does it go? Where are you guys going? We're flying out. Uh, well, flying cruising out of Fort Lauderdale, uh, down to Key West for a day. Then we're out in the ocean for a day to Nassau. And nice. then back to Fort Lauderdale. So. Dude, that's gonna be so cool. That's gonna be a that's, blast. Who, gonna be, like, yeah. who, who's gonna be on it? What's the what's the Bucks cruise part of it? So it was supposed to be Trisha Wirfs was supposed to be on there, but he just had a baby, so he's right. off. Uh, right. Antoine right. Winfield Jr. was supposed to be on there, but I guess you know it's not happy the way the off season is progressing, so he's not gonna be on there. Surprised mm. people didn't know that. You'd find out tomorrow, anyways. Um, so the roster is uh, Yaya Diaby, 
Nice. Uh, Rashad White, uh, Trey Palmer, Christian Izian, um, Joe Tryon Shrienka, Luke Gedicki, um, Greg Gaines will be on there, Kate Otten, uh, Derek Brooks, Martin Gramatica will be there for like the, the kickoff ceremony, and then he's off because he's got something he's got to do. Derek Brooks will be there for Derek Brooks breakfast. Nice. Uh, Dean Deckerhoff and oh, – and he's gonna hate me for this. Uh, his partner, who's is a former Bucks tight end. Oh, what's his name? It's not Anthony Beck, is it? No, no. no. Come on, anyone in the chat? Um, well, <laughs> the, other, the other announcer there, I forget his name. Um, uh, Jimmy Giles is gonna be on there. Hold on, I got it right here. Hold on. Um, uh, Jimmy Giles is gonna be on there. It's a whole group. Uh, who's a Bucks fan? That's all geared up. Oh, Dave Moore. My bad. Mm. Uh, Dave Moore, uh, Captain Fear, Big Nasty, Brian Ford will be on there, Casey Phillips, and Dexter Jackson. So Nice. Nice little crew, yeah. That's that nice. is a nice little crew. That's cool. That's very so cool. Be fun. I actually got Yaya and Greg Gaines on there, so I'm expecting to buy me a couple of shots. <laughs> 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 so it'll be a good time for sure. Hey, we're on the last pick of the draft, too, here, by the way. Yeah, let's do it. Let's round this baby out. Um, so where can we go to see who we got already? Uh, you can't, unfortunately. That is right. that is my uh, number one thing that I would like to uh, improve about our mock draft simulator. Trust me, it has been spoken. So <laughs> we got Kool-Aid in the first, Christian Haynes in the second. Yeah. In the third, we got Xavier Thomas and Renardo Green. Mm -hmm. In the fourth, we took Malik Washington. Mm -hmm. In the fifth, we took... Wingo. Mm -hmm. In the sixth, we just took Isaiah Davis, running back. So now you know we we're kind of open tight end, linebacker. Um, maybe another offensive lineman. Andrew Ryham is kind of Ray Rayam is kind of interesting to me. We go Ryham. I think that makes sense. Ooh, Kitano Lodipo. I, uh, I don't wait, know. Is it from Washington? Yes, right. No, um, Olafosio oh, is, oh, Ola. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, so Oladipo, Oladapo, I'm sorry. I, I do I like say him. Oladipo because Victor Oladipo. So I, just, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, he is interesting to me as well. I like John Tree Hunter too. All right. As, as a linebacker prospect. Sure. He he's definitely needs to, he definitely needs some seasoning, but I don't know if you watch any of John Tree. He was former safety. That moved down to linebacker. Yes, I've watched a little bit of him to to just get him on the big board, but I'd like him here. I like that's again, that's an ace like special teams type of a pick. Linebacker slash safety guy. Right. I'd be down with that. Any of these guys are we're looking at kind of practice squad guys, unless we yeah. you know, because I think the line now is kind of rounded out. You're not no, I think the one position that we could grab here. Um, I just want to see if there's any other guys. I think you could you would feel comfortable putting um Kitan up against Kayvon Mowler and saying let the best man win and be our fourth safety. Sure. Yeah. And Kitan's giant. So I mean like he at least gives you some unique size. So right. So that's gonna wow, run that. Yeah. Seven rounder in the books. Boom. Just over an hour. Not too bad. We got sidetracked a little bit, but hey. I do wonder if uh, kind of what you were saying, I like the idea of Christian Haynes on this team, but for like a, what draft would look the best at the end going with wide receiver or edge rusher in the second round instead of Christian Haynes there. Oh, this is new. Yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. New. We've got a little mock draft assistant. If there was a position where you could have drafted somebody who we had a little bit higher on the board, that was a position of need. Then we, uh, then we tell you about it. That's out just penciled in and that was Trevor's pick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we got an A it's also for my, our... it's, also my, it's also my suggestions. So. <laughs> um oh that's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trevor picked Christian Haynes, but he suggested you pick Ricky Paris <laughs> <all next time. laughs> Um so it looks like we're gonna get like a B plus. Yeah, B plus. Yeah. Um nice. you know you I think you fill the immediate need at, with Christian Haynes and you got your plug and play 
Um, then you've got Xavier Thomas, I think, becomes a rotational guy. Malik Washington, he becomes a rotational guy in the slot. Same thing with Wingo. Davis is probably your number two, three back, um, fighting for that spot. Katan, uh, Katan um, he's you know fighting with with uh, Kayvon Merriweather for that final safety spot. Mm -hmm. Then you got two cornerbacks here. You know, uh, is Zion a lock? They like him, but they want to try to get him on the field any way they can. But th at the same time. We're at a position here that is a premium position. Yep. That in your room has faced injuries throughout the last five seasons. Um, haven't been able to get consistent play out of your cornerbacks because they've been injured. And let's just face it, while Zion did, you know, fill in admirably in those nine starts, and you kind of be like, well, you know, not settled in. He was kind of like back and forth or whatever. Um, you know, he's playing the left side. Now he's playing the right side. He's not really time to settle in. And he, he did have some bumps in the road. He's not physical. He's not a good guy in run support. He's struggled with tackling. Um, he's not a turnover machine. Do you, do you load up that cornerback room? Do you load it up and say, Hey, we've got a replacement next year. If we need to move on from Dean and we've got guys that can step in and play and we're not going to skip a beat. And if we go more man coverage because our front four can finally get pressure, um, and we can man up on guys instead of having to play zone, then, you know, we're good there too. So, yep. Got the words to do it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, very different, it's a different mock than um, what I normally do for Tampa, but I actually, I love the hitting corner as hard as we did. I think that makes right. a ton of sense for I, this team. Got good, 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 um, you know, good safety uh, blanket in, in the secondary there with the guys that you took. So, mm -hmm. All right. That's awesome. Um, let's stop this screen from sharing. Get back to our beautiful mugs. Uh, I look, do I look nice and tan? I got a spray. Yes, tan. you do. Actually, you, you look like you just got back from a cruise. Not that you're about to go on one. I had I had a I had a prep. I got I actually this is this is a fake tan. This is a fake tan. Oh. But it looks pretty good. So I'll it take does it. look pretty good. No. Um anyways, <laughs> uh back on track here. Trevor, I want to thank you as always for coming on here, man. Spending some time with me. I know you're a very busy man. Um, I'm sure you'll be on another podcast somewhere tomorrow or doing something tomorrow. Um, so thank you for popping on here. I had a lot of fun doing the seven rounder with you, talking bucks with you as always. Go ahead. I've already promoted you. You guys should already know where this guy's at, but go ahead and promote yourself some more. Let them know where they can find you. And what you got cooking up next? Sure. Yeah. Uh, at Tampa Bay Trey on Twitter and Instagram, uh, pff.com. We're expanding the um, PFF uh, draft guide at all times. So I think we have version two that just came out. We'll have a version three, which will have, I think, over 250 prospects in there, uh, which you can go check out if you have a PFF subscription. Um, and then obviously the mock draft simulator like you're using now. Oh, and uh, the NFL Stock Exchange podcast where we're talking NFL draft all the time. But uh, you see, it was awesome being on with you again, man. It always is. It's always a lot of fun getting to chop it up, talk some Bucks football with you. So I appreciate you having me. I do have one thing to say about um, your latest mock draft on Stock Exchange. How yeah. did you let them on your birthday? Yeah. Take Chop Robinson at 26 with, with a plethora of other guys still available. Yeah, it's horrendous. Yeah. You know, I, I, uh, I, 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 was like was I, I even, I even told them during the show, you heard it. It's like That's the so only cool. wish I, I want for my birthday is for you to not do this. And they were like, now nah, we're doing it. <laughs> this is terrible. This is terrible. But what can you do? Um, I always love it when you're not picking for the box. Um, and you know, you see Connor or someone else just like, mm, you know, this would be there. And you're like, no, no, I no. used it. I used it. Maybe I should just bring this back. But like anytime I'm picking for the bucks and, or anytime I'm not picking for the bucks and somebody comes on the clock, I just go like, all right, Connor, you up at 26. Don't blow it. Or like, you know, like, all right, Ben, you're up at 26. Don't blow it. And it's just like that. Just like giving them the subtle reminder. Of, uh, <laughs> yeah. I will judge you if you make a wrong pick. Hard. And so will we for letting Trevor draft someone that has no business being there. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks so much for coming on. That's going to do it for us here. We are going to hit the road. We'll be back next week. Um, I'll have a real tan after the cruise. Uh, we'll be breaking down more draft stuff, more free agent stuff, more Bucks news as we get to the official start of the off-season program, phase one. Uh, we'll be rocking and rolling here all the way to the draft. Uh, keep it tuned here on the Pirate Parlay podcast. Follow me at JC Allen on Twitter, X, whatever it is. Um, follow my work over at Sports Illustrated Bucks Game Day. Obviously, follow the great Trevor Sikama, former Peter Report alumni, brotherhood there that we got going. And we will see you next time here on the Pirate Parlay podcast on the Sick Podcast Network. 
We're out of here. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast Pirate Parlay on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.